thank, th th thank you very much. Thank you for, for the invitation. I'm very sorry to not to be with you physically, but unfortunately it was not possible. So I will go directly now to, to the topic. Yeah, so the topic is decisional issues for human robot joint action. And this is uh, uh, the core of our research uh, here uh, at LAS, uh, which is uh, focused on the and what we call the cognitive and interactive robot. And the challenges I would like to, to tackle is to devise and build a robot that has cognitive and interactive abilities, but for, 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 for collaborating with humans or interacting in presence of humans, and more particularly, to allow it to be pertinent, I would say, uh, when, when it is doing something, transparent, legible, and acceptable in, in its behavior. And the applications that we envisage are from one side, the service that were assistant robot, of course, but also the teammate robot in the factory or, or in the field. So this work, I have not done it alone. There are a number of co-authors in the talks, I, in the stuff I will present here. And what is important here that I think we, we should focus on for us from the design part of you, I mean, I mean, programmer design part of you, is that it seems easy because you just add one parameter, which is the human. And in fact, we will see that in order to have a robot that takes explicitly into account the presence of humans, we need to revisit uh, the robot decision abilities. And this is what I would try to demonstrate through a number of my slides. And this doesn't mean less intelligence, but on, uh, on the contrary, more intelligence for the robot. More intelligence is needed, and I would say more subtlety. And uh, so we are aiming to develop, uh, uh, as, uh, as I said, uh, a full a comprehensive framework for doing this, uh, uh, I would say, joint human-robot uh, activity. And we are looking at designing, implementing, and also evaluating such, such systems. So sources of evaluations are numerous, I would say. The first one, I would say, is our intuition and experience as humans. How, how do we behave? And do, how do we think we should behave in presence of others? And also in literature, uh, there are very, I think, very, in, uh, very fruitful interactions we could have with People work in a multi-agent BDI and dialogue from one side, developmental psychology from another side, and also this very uh, small and very interesting community, which is the joint action uh, uh, community. Joint action. Joint action. I'm summarizing here the, the I would say, uh, the definition given by Natalie Sebans and Gunther Knobich uh, here in their paper, which... What is important here is to see that it is a social interaction where more several individuals, two or more humans, coordinate their actions in space and time to bring a change in the environment. And what is interesting here is that this means a number of duties and protocols, and it is very important to see that very quickly things can go awry if you don't take them into account. And this is exactly what we have to do when we put the robot to perform joint actions with, with the humans. Because we have to understand uh, from this inspiration, how are we humans able to collaborate successfully? And what is necessary to be a good partner in order to implement this, if possible, at the robot uh, level? I'm citing here some papers we have done on, on the topic. And what is interesting is that we found out that this joint action community is so interesting that we uh, uh, created, and it has been initiated by Oeli and I have joined, uh, a series of workshops on this specific topic uh, where we try to bring together psychologists, philosophers, and roboticists to uh, understand a little more these challenges where the human and robot have to interact together. So we have organized a number of workshops. The last one was this, this uh, summer in, in Helsinki. As I mentioned, this joint action issues is, uh, assumes a number of coordination tools that we are using, 
which are joint intention, for example, which is a mutual manifestness, understanding the intention of the other, knowing and exploiting the common ground between the, uh, the involved uh, agents. And, it's, and also what is very important is, is to understand what is shared and not in terms of representations, in terms of, of affordances, in terms of commitment between the agents involved in, in the joint actions, and also the duties and obligations that are linked to joint actions. There is this nano, the key notion of persistent goal, which is joint between the different partners in, 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 uh, in the collaborative activity. The, uh, I would say, the obligations somehow to inform, uh, uh, to inform the other, the partner, and also, if possible, the facilitation that the behaviors that we could have uh, to help the other understand uh, this, the uh, understand and, and track and follow the joint action while it is performed. So all this is for us key uh, and inspiring to build what we call the robot decisional abilities. And this is uh, a kind of, I would say, uh, our, our uh, conceptual architecture. We imagine that we have the human and you have the robot and there is something to do uh, in, in the middle, physical action to, to perform. They are, there is multi-model dialogue between both. There is multi, uh, that is mutual observation, and this is key. The robot observes the human, the human observes the robot, and it is important to take into account that the robot knows that it is observed, okay? And the robot has here to share the task, to share the space, and to share the decision. And if there is a task to be performed, it has to be performed in the best possible way, which is efficiently, of course, we are engineers, but also safely. And also these two key aspects that, that are the core of this, uh, I would say, this session today, which is the notion of acceptability in, in the large sense, including the intentionality of the robot, the legibility and predictability of its behavior, uh, and the interaction while performing the task. This issue of acceptability is key since it will influence the action of the robot. And what we think is that there are two key aspects here that will help us to move towards this, uh, I would say, this uh, target, which is from one side, equipping the robot with a plan, planning and online deliberation uh, capabilities, and also explicitly taking into account the estimating and taking into account the mental state of the human partner when it is interacting with the human. This is a part, partially what can be called a theory of mind. But this is not enough because what, what is also very important here, even if we are doing joint actions, a human and robot are not equal partners. The robot is not equal. A human is not restrictive restricted to the task at hand. Human is free. Human needs to have at any time the latitude to change his or her focus, to disengage, for example. A human might even not comply for unknown reasons with duties uh, for fluent joint action, and still the robot should be able to adapt uh, to, 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 to this uh, situation. And also, very importantly, the, the, since it is the robot, it has from its side to do the maximum to elaborate uh, legible, acceptable, and comfortable behavior uh, with respect to, to the human. And we think we can take this into account in what we call human aware task and motion planning, in the sense that in motion and task planning, we take into account the human explicitly, and in order to synthesize behaviors that are better than others, because you would have to, to choose one behavior between others, one plan between others, we'll use techniques, essentially cost-based estimation between plans to, in order to compare and to balance between different plans. So this is, uh, I would say, the, uh, uh, the main, uh, I would say, the core topic of our constructive approach. 
And also what is important is that in fact, we found out that there are, uh, it is possible to decompose uh, these issues into different ingredients. We'll see some of them or components or abilities and then how they can be articulated into what we call an architecture okay, to perform, to, to uh, really allow the robot to, uh, uh, I would say, elaborate and execute its, uh, its, its, its behavior. And in order to do this, what is key is uh, the investigation of models. What are the good models, the good representations, and how they can be acquired. So under the hood, this is the kind of architecture that we are developing. I will not go to details uh, in it uh, today since we, we have limited time. Uh, but I would like to show here some of the ingredients. I spoke about ingredients. These are some of the ingredients we have worked on. Like, for example, the, the what we call human aware navigation, the ability to navigate in presence or in synergy with humans. Same for manipulation, manipulate uh, objects. Other issues that are key in this interaction between human robot are the key notion of affordances. There is all, and the affordances goes with something else that is very important is the ability for the robot to estimate the perspective of the human, what the human sees from its side, would like the robot to put itself in the shoes of its, uh, of its human partner, and even to estimate the, the, the beliefs, and particularly to be able to detect when they are divergent between what it thinks it is happening and what the, uh, the human is estimated to think what, it, what is happening. And all this are, I would say, uh, I would say, uh, food uh, to, to nurture the task planning, what we call human aware planning and cooperative task achievement. So uh, we have implemented a number and contributed to a number of, of uh, I would say, projects. Where I'm showing here some of them. Uh, we're in different situations like robot guide or assistant at home or a, a, a robot in, in, in a mall uh, giving information to humans or a robot co-worker. And in all these situations, we try to investigate a number of these, uh, I would say, decisional issues, which can be summarized in this slide, I would say, permanently the robot at, uh, at uh, various level of abstractions, but also at various horizon, time horizons, has to ask itself, what should we do? Who should do? Not always the robot, sometimes the human. Where can we act? When also is, is, is very, very important when to act this and also how. And the how issue is very important since there are different ways to perform a task. Some are preferred to others because again of this notion of acceptability and predictability. So we are going now to uh, some of the uh, examples of elaborating a shared plan where the human and robot will have to work uh, to, 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 together. The, uh, the issue here is to build a good plan, not only any plan, to build a plan that takes into account the fact that the, there is another actor, another partner, which is the human, taking into account that the, the legibility and acceptability of, of, uh, of the robot, and also notions like compliance with conventions. It has been presented and discussed in, uh, just in, in the previous uh, presentation. Uh, and also these notions of a coherent attitude and behavior that the robot has to exhibit. And at the same time, the robot has a duty to help and facilitate human interpretation, decision, and actions while performing an action. And all this, all this, it's, it, it are somehow constraints on the robot behavior. All this should be taken into account as much as we can, of course, and this is incremental, uh, at, uh, in order to elaborate the best, the good plans, uh, I would say, the, the good robot plans. So now, what, when you speak about planning, there are, there are books about planning. I'm, I'm citing the, 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 this one, which was qu quite recent and very inter uh, interesting about techniques of planning that exist today 
and are available to the community and are, are for sure very interesting and very inspiring. But this is not enough since we have to take into account the context of HRI. And this take us to the issue that are uh, that should be uh, added to the planning uh, issues, which is the pertinence of planning for both. The robot should not plan only for itself, but also take into account how the human could intervene. And this has consequences on on uh, on the robot because it has to it needs to have not only an action models about its own actions, but also models about human actions about human beliefs. This is what we call human aware situation assessment, the ability to perform a situation assessment, taking into account the uh, the human present in the scene. And the second aspect is the ability of building a good plan, which we call human aware planning. So th this is an example uh, uh, of hierarchical decomposition of a task where the, the, there is a, a common goal somehow, and the robot has to refine it, taking into account what it should do and what the human can do until reaching at the low level a, a, a double stream somehow of execution where there is a stream of execution of actions of humans and the stream of, of, of actions that will be executed for, by the robot. Of course, both of them are, have to be coordinated. And, and again, there are reconstraints on the robot action. Let's give an example, very simple here. We have, we, we have a, a, a task here, which is simply cleaning this table, putting all what is on top of the table in the box. So uh, depending on the situations, it, it will be the human that will act or the robot will act. You see where I'm, I'm simply, for example, move, move the, the, the box here. And since the box in the second slide is near the human, the robot will have to hand over the uh, the uh, the box the uh, objects to the human, and the human will put them in the box. While in the first uh, situation, the each of the agents can perform independently somehow. And this notion, which is key, because it will allow the robot for when, whenever it has to decompose an action. I'm giving here some some examples. We'll have to decide who will do the task and in which way. And as you see, for example, cl clearing an object from the table can be done by, by performing one uh, itself, the, the robot take and throw, or take, give to the other that will throw. Okay, And, uh, and even though exchange between objects could be give directly or give to, put it near the table and it is taken by the other. And so here, for example, are two, simply by changing the position of the object of the, of the box, you have two types of plans. One are two parallel plans, simply between the human and the, and the robot. And the other is a coordinated action between the human and the robot. So the next slide is a video that I will switch because we don't have time, which shows simply this kind of implementation. I will switch to the next slide, okay? Uh, to show that uh, this doesn't happen only at task level, I mean, I mean order and uh, of actions, but also can uh, has to be taken into account at geometry uh, level. Uh, for example, the, 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 there was also a, a talk about robot delivery, robot delivering objects to a human. There could be two, two situations. For example, here this robot is doing a delivery to the human. And uh, so planning uh, a situation that it is taking an object and giving it to the human. But there could be another solution, which is like this. For, the, for, for example, if the human is in, in a hurry, it could be perhaps easier to share the load and make the human uh, take the object uh, through the window. So even for a simple task like this, a simple handover, depending if the human is willing to contribute, depending on constraints due to the environment or, or to the task, there are different ways to perform the task and the robot should be able to take care of this and particularly adapt to human decision. Another example that I would like to give here is uh, the example here where in, in, in a narrow corridor, 
if you if you don't take into account if the robot doesn't take into account that the human could contribute to the task by by moving himself and facilitating the robot will reach a situation where we will have a freezing robot the robot the robot freezes because it cannot find a solution here we have developed a planner that is able to plan for both and propose solution for humans even in constrained environment like this uh, so and what is interesting here is that here not only the robot find a solution but also anticipates and pro and make it legible to its its human at the same time the robot should be able if if it's uh, i would say its decision or or its proposal for solving uh, a problem like this uh, uh, is not accepted by the human to comply and adapt to what to the human needs or or desires and this is this take us to this last notion that i wanted to to uh, focus here which is the need to maximize plan utility taking into account what we call social rules which is uh, situations where the robot should for example avoid desired states avoid to i would say uh uh, avoid situations that are not uh, that are not un understandable by the human. Avoid to make the human wait if it's not n necessary, and also satisfying social conventions and promoting legibility towards the human. So, for example, these are two plans for the same task, and uh, our plan I would propose the second one instead of the first one. Why? Essentially, because in the second one. The human will not have to wait twice for the robot, but only to coordinate at the end of, of the plan. And so even if it is more complex for the robot, it has to comply and to facilitate the, uh, the uh, I would say, the actions uh, of the human. I think I'm lit I don't know how much time I have yet. Uh, what I wanted to add here is uh, that recently we have developed a planner where the robot not only uh, i would say plan for the human and robot but also uh, is able when necessary to elicit human reaction i will give the example here very quickly let's assume the human and robot have to build a simple stack like like this of objects one out of the other with cubes that are of, of different color and depending on how the human has, has even formulated the goal, like, hey, robot, do this, achieve this task, or hey, robot, let us together achieve this task, the robot will not choose the same behavior. And even in the second, in the first situation where it is assumed to perform it alone, it can, if necessary, in, still involve the human if it if it needs it this takes us to have the robot to can able to predict or elicit human reaction or decision so uh, i will give an example here where the same task is performed where uh, uh, the humans and robot are in different uh, positions and orders have been given in a different way and what is interesting in this scheme is that the robot is specifically reasoning planning for both but uh, planning for the human in a different way that is planning for itself because the human is by definition uncontrollable the the robot should not control the human but simply propose felicit uh, uh, elicit and facilitate the action of, of the of, of the human and perform its part and so our planner is able to build a plan I would say conditional plans that take the different uh, possible that estimates a priori the different reactions and uh, and decisions of the human and and uh, uh, I would say uh, track what is happening and and follow the the best uh, open solution when it, when it when it happens for the human for example here what you see is the robot will need the human contribution because uh, it cannot reach the cube near the human. Uh, the human is not involved in the task. Yes. But, 
but still it asks the help for the human because he found out that human is near the robot that could help. Uh, and then the robot finishes the task. But in another situation where the robot finds out, for example, here, that there are the, it will, in, uh, I would say, involve the human in several steps, it will you want ask. Me to build the stack, please? Yes. What happens here is that the robot prefers to ask, the, to, to involve the human in building the stack completely, to sharing the, the goal with, with him. And this is what is happening here. The human and the robot are, are intervening at a different moment in the same, uh, I would say, uh, stack. So since I'm a little bit, I will stop here and go to the conclusion. So for those who are uh, showing uh, the, 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 the slides, I will switch to the conclusion. Uh, let me see. Uh, I will switch all this because it's too late. Uh, sorry. Uh, what is important, and I wanted to uh, to make the point here, is that uh, we can define, we have defined a number of criteria for planning additional issues that are mentioned here, that are here ordered in terms of cost-based search or, or in terms of constraints to the planning system, or in terms of properties that the plan should satisfy, or features that should be satisfied. And what I'm showing in green is that things that are uh, today starting to be taken into account. For example, we have seen in navigation that proxemics, visibility, social rules is interesting to be taken into account even in navigation, but also in task. Relative placements of objects and postures are key. Protocols are essentials. Social rules, as, as I mentioned, and compliance to social norms. And also these features of I would say legibility, acceptability, and comfort of, of the human. Uh, so this is the end of my talk. Okay. Thank you very much.